Shrimas Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're going to continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 4, text 6. Ajo Pisan Avyayatma. Ajo Pisan Avyayatma. Bhutanam Ishwaro Pisan. Bhutanam Ishwaro Pisan. Prakritim Swam Adishthaya. Prakritim Swam Adhisthaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya Translation Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the Lord of all living entities I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form Purpose the Lord has spoken about the peculiarity of his birth. Although he may appear like an ordinary person, he remembers everything of his many, many past births, whereas a common man cannot remember what he has done even a few hours before. If someone is asked what he did exactly at the same time one day earlier, it would be very difficult for a common man to answer immediately. He would surely have to dredge his memory to recall what he was doing exactly at the same time one day before. And yet, men often dare claim to be God or Krishna. One should not be misled by such meaningless claims. Then again, the Lord explains his prakriti or his form. Prakriti means nature as well as swarupa or one's own form. The Lord says that he appears in his own body. He does not change his body as a common, as a common living, living entity changes from one body to another. The conditioned soul may have one kind of body in the present birth, but he has a different body in the next birth. In the material world, the living entity has no fixed body, but transmigrates from one body to another. The Lord, however, does not do so. Whatever he appears, he does so in the same original body, by his eternal potency. In other words, Krishna appears in this material world in his original eternal form with two hands holding a flute. He appears exactly in his eternal body, uncontaminated by this material world. Although he appears in the same transcendental body and is Lord of the universe, it still appears that he takes his birth like an ordinary living entity. And although his body does not deteriorate, like a material body, it still appears that Lord Krishna grows from childhood to boyhood and from boyhood to youth. But astonishingly enough, he never ages beyond youth. At the time of the battle of Kurukshetra, he had many grandchildren at home. Or in other words, he had sufficiently aged by material calculations. Still, he looked just like a young man, 20 or 25 years old. We never see a picture of Krishna in old age because he never grows old like us. Although he is the oldest person in the whole creation, past, present and future. Neither his body nor his intelligence ever deteriorates or changes. Therefore, it is clear that in spite of his being in the material world, he is the same unborn, eternal form of bliss and knowledge, changeless in his transcendental body and in intelligence. Factually, his appearance and disappearance are like the sun's rising, moving from us and then disappearing from our eyesight. When the sun is out of sight, we think that the sun has set. And when the sun is before our eyes, we think that the sun is on the horizon. Actually, the sun is always in its fixed position. But owing to our defective insufficient senses, we calculate the appearance and disappearance of the sun in the sky. And because Lord Krishna's appearance and disappearance are completely different from that of any ordinary common living entity, it is evident that he is eternal, blissful knowledge by his internal potency and he is never contaminated by material nature. The Vedas also confirm that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is unborn yet. 
he still appears to take his birth in multi-manifestations. The Vedic supplementary literatures also confirm that even although that even though the Lord appears to be taking his birth, he is still without change of body. In the Bhagavatam, he appears before his mother as Narayana with four hands and the decoration of six kinds of full opulences. His appearance in his original eternal form is his causeless mercy bestowed upon the living entities so that they can concentrate on the Supreme Lord as he is and not on mental connections concussions or imaginations which the impersonalist strongly thinks the Lord formed to be. The word Maya or Atma Maya refers to the Lord's causeless mercy according to the Vishwa Kosha Dictionary. The Lord is conscious of all of his previous appearances and disappearances, but a common living entity forgets everything about his past body as soon as he gets another body. He is the Lord of all living entities because he performs wonderful and superhuman activities while he is on the earth. On this earth, therefore, the Lord is always the same absolute truth and is without differentiation between his form and self or between his quality and body. A question may now be raised as to why the Lord appears and disappears in the world. This is explained in the next verse. So Arjuna asked Krishna, no, oh, how you spoke to Vivaswan, how you spoke to him so many two million years ago, and you are just now with me, then how you spoke. So Krishna says that, you know, it's not that the first time I've come here, and not first time that you have also come. But the difference is that I remember each time I've come, but you have forgotten. And then Krishna is telling him that about his body. Krishna is saying, my body is transcendental. It's not that Krishna, each time that he comes, he takes another body like we. We are taking different bodies. You know, sometimes we are the body of a human being, sometimes tree, sometimes bird. Even human being, we may next time be in another. We will be in another body of a human being. But Krishna, he says he appears in every millennium in his original transcendental form. Krishna does not change his body. Krishna's form is transcendental. Sat, Chit, Ananda, eternal, full of knowledge, full of bliss. He does not take a material body, even when he's coming to the material world. Some people mistakenly think that Krishna's body is also material, that Krishna is also subject to laws of karma. No, Krishna is not an ordinary person. Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He's the Lord of this material energy. It's like, again, the example which Prabhupada gives. You know, if a king has to enter the prison, he doesn't have to wear the prison clothes. He can go whenever he wants to the prison, talk to the prisoners, and come out whenever he wants. And he goes in his own royal clothes. Similarly, Krishna, he comes in his own original form. He doesn't need a material form to come to this material world. And yet, we mistakenly think that, oh, Krishna is ordinary. He himself is very clearly saying in Bhagavad Gita and all the scriptures say, Brahma Samita, Lord Brahma keeps saying, Satchidananda Vikraha Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. That Krishna's form is Satchidananda, he's the original person. So Krishna's body does not change. Our body keeps changing. That's our difference. We are conditioned soul, so we have a one body in this life, after we die, we will have another body. So that our body is not fixed in this material world. But Krishna, is, he comes in his own body by his internal potency. We are under the control of the material energy. But Krishna never comes under the control of material energy. He says, Devi Esha Gunamai. This, he says, this material energy, she's divine. Why? Because she belongs to him. 
and he says it's my energy mayati akshena prakriti says all this in bhagavad gita he says this material energy is my energy he is not under the control of the energy just like the king is not under control of prison laws he's just visiting why is he visiting so people can take advantage they the prisoners they can ask him oh can you please let me go out he can talk to them see if someone is will ready to be let loose you know and they can know how the king looks no need to speculate why does krishna come in his original form so we know how god looks he says i'm god and this is how i look but we imagine we try to imagine and say no god must be looking like this must be looking like that instead of just accepting god himself is saying here i'm god i look like this instead of just accepting like how arjuna is accepting this knowledge of bhagavad gita we try to misinterpret misinterpret now krishna's body is transcendental so it never becomes it never deteriorates never becomes old yeah he appears as a baby and then from baby he is becoming like a small boy from a small boy he comes like a youth and then he remains looking like a youth nav yovanam even though he was 100 years old he still he had grandchildren but he still looked like a young man that's because his body is transcendental krishna never has like he is the original person krishna he he's you know the original personality of godhead from him has come everything but we never see krishna becoming old he does not have white hair wrinkles no krishna his body is transcendental it's not a material body his intelligence also never changes intelligence never deteriorates so even though he is coming in the material world he is the same as it said same unborn that's the point we have to understand there is a difference between krishna and us and we have to understand that whenever krishna comes he is coming in he is coming in his same own transcendental body he does not need a material body he does not take a material body we make a very great error if we think krishna's body is material that krishna's body is in the mode of good uh, mode of ordinary material mode of goodness that oh when krishna leaves the world then his body is no more no no it's like saying that prabhupad is giving the example you know the sun now the sun is up here in this part of the world in another part of the world it's is not there so does it mean that the sun is not there you know when it becomes dark here when it becomes dark in front of our eyes does it mean the sun does not exist anymore no it, no right? it means it's a fixed position that's right thank you and it's it's not in front of our eyes but other people in other part of the world can see it right isn't it yes so yes. same yeah so same krishna's appearance and disappearance is like that krishna appears in front of us for a certain time and then he's in another when we can't see him he's in another universe another planet having his past times his leelas so his past times are completely different than ours is past times and not that we don't have past times we are really uh, under the influence of karma you know we are acting according to the in the influence of karma but krishna no he has no karma he's beyond that he's transcendental so krishna uh, the vedas also say that veda also says that although krishna appears to be taking birth but his body never changes in bhagavatam we hear how krishna appeared in front of mother devki and vasudev he had four hands he came in his narayan he had four hands he was wearing all his ornaments 
he was uh, you know four hands he was carrying chakra conch the mace the lotus flower everything so he comes in his original body full appearance full opulences He's coming to show that this is how I look. Don't try to use your imagination of how I look. I am here and you can see me. And this is how I look. When we try to imagine, that's where the problem comes. There's, there's nothing to use the imagination. Krishna does not leave any doubt as to how he looks. He just says, I am here and this is how I look. So... Krishna, when he comes, then he can still remember everything of long, long before. But we can't. We forget because we change our body. We are changing the material body, one body to another. We forget. We can't even remember what we did exactly, you know, last year at this time. What to say last year? You know, say yesterday at a random time, we say five 5.36 a.m. with so many seconds. What were we doing? We don't even remember. And Krishna remembers. And yet we think that uh, Krishna is same like us. No, we have to understand there is a difference between Krishna's position and our position. Even when Krishna is coming to the earth as the son of Nanda and Yashoda as the son of Devki and Vasudev. He's still the supreme absolute truth. He's still God. You know, it's like a president. A president in the night, he has to go home, no? He's in office, but at night he has to go home. And at home he has his, his mother, he has his wives, he has his children. So does it mean he's not president anymore? He's still the president, no? He's just yes. going home. Yeah, but he's still the president. So Krishna, even when he's coming as son of uh, son of Nanda and Yashoda, son of Vasudev Devki, he's still God. He's still the supreme absolute truth. That's his position. You have to understand Krishna's position. That's knowing him in Tattva. Now, Prabhupada is saying, next verse, he says, now, why does he come? Krishna himself is explaining, why is he coming? So, is that okay of what we just read? That Krishna is coming in his own original transcendental form. Krishna's form is transcendental, Satchidananda, not material. Yada, yada, hi dharmasya. Yada yada hi dharmasya. Glanir bhavati bharata. Glanir bhavati bharata. Abhyutanam adharmasya. Abhyutanam adharmasya. Tatatmanam srujamiyaham. Tatatmanam srujanaham. Translation. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharata and a, and a predominant rise of an irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Purport. The word Srajami is significant herein. Srajami cannot be used in the sense of creation because according to the previous verse, there is no creation of the Lord's form or body. Since all of the forms are eternally existent, Therefore, Srajanami means that the Lord manifests himself as he is. Although the Lord appears on the schedule, namely at the end of the Dwapar Yoga of the 28th millennium of the 7th Manu in one day of Brahma, he has no obligation to adhere to such rules and regulations because he is completely free to act in many ways at his will. He therefore appears by his own will whenever there is a predominance of it religiosity and a disappearance of true religion. Principles of religion are laid down in the Vedas and any discrepancy in the matter of properly 
executing the rules of the Veda makes one irreligious. In the Bhagavatam, it is stated that such principles are the laws of the Lord. Only the Lord can manufacture a system of religion. The Vedas are also accepted as originally spoken by Lord himself to Brahma from within his heart. Therefore, the principles of dharma or religion are the direct orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam. These principles are clearly indicated through the Bhagavad Gita. The purpose of the Vedas is to establish such principles under the order of the Supreme Lord. And the Lord directly orders at the end of the Gita that the highest principle of religion is to surrender unto him only and nothing more. The Vedic principles push one towards complete surrender up to him, unto him. And whenever such principles are disturbed by the demoniac, the Lord appears. From the Bhagavatam, we understand that Lord Buddha is the incarnation of Krishna who appeared when materialism was rampant and materialists were using the pretext of the authority of the Vedas. Although there are certain restrictive rules and regulations regarding animal sacrifice for particular purposes in the Vedas, people of demonic tendency still took to animal sacrifice without reference to the Vedic principles. Lord Buddha appeared in order to stop this nonsense and to establish the Vedic principles of non-violence. Therefore, each and every avatara or incarnation of the Lord has a particular mission and they all are described in the revealed scriptures. No one should be accepted as an avatara unless he is referred to by scriptures. It is not a fact that the Lord appears only on Indian soil. He can manifest himself anywhere and everywhere and whenever he desires to appear, in each and every incarnation, he speaks as much about religion as can be understood by the particular people under their particular circumstances. But the mission is the same: to lead people and to God, to lead people to God consciousness and obedience to the principles of religion. Sometimes he descends personally, and sometimes he sends his bona fide representative in the form of his son or servant or himself in some disguised form. The principles of the Bhagavad Gita were spoken to Arjuna and for that matter to other highly elevated persons because he was highly advanced compared to ordinary persons in other parts of the world. 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a mathematical principle that is true in the beginner's arithmetic class and in the advanced class as well. Still, there are higher and lower mathematics in all in, in all incarnations of the Lord, therefore the same principles are taught, but they appear to be higher and lower in varied circumstances. The higher principles of religion begin with the acceptance of the four orders and the four statuses of social life, as will be explained later. The whole purpose of the mission of incarnations is to arouse Krishna consciousness everywhere. Such consciousness is manifest and non-manifest only under circumstances. Only under different circumstances. So Krishna is saying, now so, why does he come? Why does he come? When does he come? When there is uh, people don't follow religion? Yeah. People don't follow religion and they become irreligious. Then hmm. So both, There's, they're not following religion and they're becoming irreligious. <laughs> so he comes, manifests himself. Here Prabhupada is helping us point out that Krishna's body is transcendental. Krishna's form is transcendental. So there is not, we can't say this body is created. It just becomes manifest in front of us. It's something we have to understand. Lord manifests as he is. So he comes on a schedule. Krishna, he himself, he comes on a schedule, but he, still, he does not have the obligation to adhere to such regulations. Why? Because he's the complete, he's the, he's Swarat, he's independent. Nobody can force Krishna, you do this, you must do this. Why? He's not bound by anything. He's the Supreme Lord. He has the supreme will. You see, we, we are forced to take birth 
in a particular family, particular body. We don't have to, nobody asks us a question and nobody gives us a form to fill. Oh, which planet you want to take birth in? Which family? Which species? What kind of body you want? No, nobody asks us. We just find ourselves in the body. We find ourselves there. We are forced in it by laws of karma. But not Krishna. He comes at his own will. And now he's saying he comes whenever and wherever there is decline in religion and increase in irreligion. He comes in his own original transcendental form. So usually Krishna's schedule is in one day of Brahma, uh, one day of Brahma he comes once. So we may say, wow, every day, our day is so short, you know. Yeah, but Lord Brahma's day, according to the human calculation, is do you know how many times of the Chatur Yugas, how many Chatur Yugas are there in Brahma's one day? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so 20, what are the Chatur Yugas? There's the Satyug, Treta Yug, Dwapar Yug, and Kal Yug. Yes. Okay. So they are called together, it's called Chatur Yoga. Now, they, each of them come 1,000 times in one day of Brahma. And that's just Brahma's 12 hours. So in 12 hours of Brahma, there Means is... 28 million. So, yeah, 28 millennium, yeah. But right now we are seeing that how is this 28 millennium? Calculated. So there's 1,000 of these Chatur Yugas. 1,000 so 1, Chatur Yugas in 12 hours only. In 12 hours. That's right. That is 2,000 so Chatur Yugas in 24 hours. No, so in the night, everything is dissolved in the lower planets. There's no... All the lower all hellish planets, earthly planets, up to heavenly planets, everything is underwater. There's nothing there. That's the night of Brahma. There's no creation of the lower planets in the night okay. of Brahma. Then again, the creation happens the next morning. In the morning, again, he goes to work. Like how we get up and we go to work. Night, we are sleeping. So that's what happens. So in one day means there's 1,000 Satyog, 1,000 Treta, 1,000 Dwapara, 1,000 Kalyog. Now in this, one day of Brahma, there comes 14 Manus. Manu is the father of mankind. 14 of them come in one day of Brahma. So each Manu is there for about 71 of this Chatur Yugas. You know, because 1,000, you divide by 1,000. And then you divide it by 14. It's about 71. So each Manu is there about 71. And then Krishna comes in the 28th Chaturya, the millennium it's called here. So 28th of this cycle of the 7th Manu. So 14 Manus are there. So in the 7th Manu. So about when, when Brahma is about 50 years old. So our Brahma's age is about 50 years old because Krishna just came 5,000 years ago. Yeah, it's in the 28th millennium yeah. of Sarit Manu. And then when Krishna comes, he's not bound. He can come whenever he sees that there is a religion going on. He can come whenever, wherever he, he wants, you know. These All these principles, the Vedas, they are laid down by him. Krishna is the original speaker of the Vedas. Tene Brahma Hridaya Adhikavaya. Bhagavatam says the very first chapter, first, the first verse. Shlavyasa Dev immediately points out the position of Krishna. That he is the Supreme Lord. He is the speaker of the Vedas. He is independent, completely free to act as he likes. He is the Lord of the the demigods, the all the planets that exist. So this is 
This is the position of Krishna, is the supreme personality of God at Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranitam. Krishna has laid down the religious principles. He is the father of religion. We cannot, you we cannot say, oh, I'm gonna write down some religious principles. We can't, we do not have our principles are going to be defective because living entities now in the we are in the material body, we have four defects. You know, we commit mistakes. Do you remember what are the four defects? Sorry, the four imperfect senses and illusion. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, imperfect senses, illusion. We have a propensity to cheat. Propensity to cheat, yeah. And one yeah. More we commit mistakes, no? Yeah. We commit mistakes. So our whatever we are going to say is going to be defective, but not Krishna. He's the Supreme Lord. So only he can set the principles of religion. No one else. No one else can set the principles of religion. Hmm. Or can you just give me a moment, please? Just one moment. And so Krishna and Bhagavad Gita, these are religious principles that Krishna is laying down for us. And the Veda is also speaking about these religious principles. And what is Krishna saying at the, the highest principle in the Bhagavad Gita? He's saying, surrender to me. 1866. Just surrender unto me. Give up everything else. So all, all the religious principles are based on this. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Those are That's the main principle and everything else is there to support this. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Krishna himself is also saying in Bhagavad Gita, engage your mind in always thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances unto me. So here Prabhupada is pointing out that Lord Buddha, Lord Buddha is also, and he is an incarnation of Krishna. So Krishna, he comes, and whenever he sees there's irreligion, he comes and gives the teachings according to time, place, and circumstance, according to how much the people of that time are able to understand. He speaks that much. So Buddha, he came, Lord Buddha, because at that time people were misusing the Vedas. On the authority of Vedas, they were in, indulging in animal slaughter. So that's where Lord Buddha came and said, hey, stop all this animal slaughter and just, just look up to me, become a Buddha. He said, stop, don't, don't, don't look at this Vedic principle. They were not able to understand. They were misusing the Vedic principles. So he said, okay, you just, just don't read the Vedas. You just listen to me and you stop all this slaughter. So he is Krishna always according to time, place and circumstance. What is the necessity of the moment? He gives, he lays down the principles accordingly to, to again bring a balance in the world. So that's important. For example, even Jesus Christ, Came. He gave the teachings according to time, place, and circumstance. You know how much the people of that time are able to accept. So Prabhupada is also pointing out that we cannot accept anyone and everyone as avatar or incarnation of Krishna, of God. You know, like that, everyone will say, Oh, I'm also incarnation. In Kali Yuga, all of us want to be incarnation of Krishna. But we cannot just accept anyone to be an incarnation has to be refer referred in the scriptures. The scriptures should mention. That also the revealed scriptures, not written by some person at some point of time, you know. No, the revealed scriptures have to mention that uh, this, this, uh, this personality will come. He's an incarnation of God. 
his parents' name will be given, what, where he'll be born will be given, and what he's going to do is going to be given also. Prabhupada is also pointing out not that Krishna and his avatar come on only on Indian soil. He can he comes anywhere and everywhere where it is needed. Where it's needed. And then again, he speaks as per time, place, and circumstance, as can be understood by the, the by the people he's speaking to. You know, like if you're gonna speak to to a second grader, you're gonna speak to them about basic math. You're not going to speak to them about calculus. They weren't able to understand. So whenever Krishna comes, he speaks according to what the people are able to understand. But the principle is the same. To lead people to God consciousness. Follow the principles of religion. That's the reason he's coming. He never adjusts the principle. The principle is the same. As Prabhupada says, 2 plus 2 is 4. It's it's for even for a second grader. It's for even for someone in doing their calculus. It's the basic principle. It's just sometimes he will give the higher principle. Sometimes he will not speak so much. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is giving the highest principle. Why? Because Arjuna is able to receive such knowledge. Arjuna, Arjuna is a great personality. He's not an ordinary person. His consciousness is already very high. He's able to understand this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna is giving him the highest principle in Bhagavad Gita. That surrender unto me. I am the Supreme Lord. You are my part and parcel. Krishna is very, very clearly saying, Krishna is saying, all the material spiritual worlds, they are coming from me. The living entities are my parts and parcels. So, Krishna is speaking the highest philosophy in Bhagavad Gita because Arjuna is able to understand this philosophy. Is that okay? Shilpa, what are the four orders of the higher principle? Is it to the Principles of religion. Richard, four orders of higher principle. What is that? I'm sorry. No meat eating, no gambling. Higher principle of religion. Huh? Four orders. What are the four orders? This is Varna Sharma. Like, then what are the four status? Four orders and four status. So, so this is Brahmachari. Uh, Brahman Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, that for Varna and for Ashram. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. So people at that time they were following the Varna Sharma. And so already they were very evolved. Their consciousness was evolved. They could, Arjuna was able to accept this um, knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. But we have to understand that Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita is not only for Arjuna, but for to us also. Ar, through Arjuna, he wants us to understand this knowledge. Paritrana ya sadhuna. Paritrana ya sadhuna. Vinashaya cha dushkrita. Vinashaya cha dushkrita. Dharma samsthapanarthaya. Dharma samsthapanarthaya. Sambhavami yuge yuge. Sambhavami yuge yuge. You're reading? Haribo. Haribo, sorry, sorry. It was muted. I didn't realize. Sorry. No, no. Translation. No. To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, 
as well as to re-establish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. Purport. According to Bhagavad Gita, a sadhu holy man is a man in Krishna consciousness. A person may appear to be irreligious, but if he has the qualification of Krishna consciousness wholly and fully, he is to be understood to be a sadhu. And Dushkatam applies to those who do not care for Krishna consciousness. Such miscreants or Dushkratam are described as foolish and the lowest of mankind, even though they may be decorated with mundane education, whereas, whereas a person who is 100% engaged in Krishna consciousness is accepted as a sadhu, even though such a person may be neither learned nor well cultured. As far as the atheistic are concerned, it is not necessary for the Supreme Lord to appear as he is to destroy them, as he did with the demons, Ravana and Kamsha. The Lord has many agents who are quite competent to vanquish the demons, but the Lord especially descends to appease his unalloyed devotees who are always harassed by the demoniac. The demon harasses the devotee even though the latter may happen to be his kin. Although Prahlad Maharaj was son of Hiranyakashipu, he was nonetheless persecuted by his father. Although Devaki, the mother of Krishna, was a sister of Kamsha, she and her husband Vasudeva were persecuted only because Krishna was to be born of them. So Lord Krishna appeared primarily to deliver Devaki rather than kill Kamsha. But both were performed simultaneously. Therefore it is said here that to deliver the devotee and to vanquish the demon miscreants, the Lord appears in different incarnations. In the Chaitanya Charitram, Charitramata of Krishna Dasa Kaviraja, the following verses summarize these principles of incarnation. Shristi Hetu Ye Murti Prapanche Avatare Shi Ishwara Murti Avatara Namadhare Mayayita Paravyome Savara Savara Avashtana Vivshe avatari dhare avatara nama. The avatara or incarnation of Godhead descends from the kingdom of God for material manifestation. And the particular form of the personality of Godhead who so descends is called an incarnation or avatara. Such incarnations are situated in the spiritual world, the kingdom of God. When they descend to the material creation, they assume the name avatara. There are various kinds of avatars, such as Purusha avatars, Guna avatars, Leela avatars, Satyavesha avatars, Manvantara avatars, and Yuga avatars, all appearing on schedule all over the universe. But Lord Krishna is the primeval Lord and the fountainhead of all avatars. Lord Shri Krishna descends for the specific purpose of mitigating the anxieties of the pure devotees who are very anxious to see him in his original Vrindavan pastimes. Therefore, the prime purpose of the Krishna avatara is to satisfy his unalloyed devotees. The Lord says that he incarnates himself in every millennium. This indicates that he incarnates also in the age of Kali. As stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the incarnation in the age of Kali is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who spread the worship of Krishna by the Sankirtana movement, congregational chanting of the holy names, and spread Krishna consciousness throughout India. He predicted that this culture of Sankirtana would be broadcast all over the world, from town to town and village to village. Lord Chaitanya, as the incarnation of Krishna, the personality of Godhead, is described secretly but not directly in the confidential parts of the revealed scriptures, such as the Upanishads, Mahabharat and Bhagavatam. The devotees of Lord Krishna are very much attracted by the Sankirtana movement, Sankirtana movement of Lord Chaitanya. This avatara of the Lord does not kill the miscreants, but delivers them by his causeless mercy. So Krishna says he comes whenever a religion is more, religious practices are not there. Says he comes to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants and reestablish. 
the principles of religion. Like he came, I read Prabhupada is giving the example, Hiranyakashipu was, you know, being so, almost like he was torturing his son, right? So Lord Nishingadev came to protect Prala, to kill Nishinga, uh, to kill Hiranyakashipu. So Krishna, actually, he does not need to come to kill the demons personally. You know, with time, they're anyway going to die. Time factored, Krishna says, time I am. Time is the impersonal representation of Krishna. He has other agents by which he can kill the demons. So why does he come? It's specifically to be with the devotees, to engage in loving pastimes with the devotees. That's his main concern. Because killing the demons, and that he can do it, you know. He'll just maybe send, give them a heart attack or something. He can do such things. But he wants to be with the devotees. He wants to have, he has this loving relation with the devotees. And he comes, as Prabhupada is pointing out, you know, to be there with Prahlad. And there's such a loving exchange between Prahlad and Lord Nishingadev. Or Devki, she was so, you know, went through such a difficult time with Khans. So Krishna wanted to also appease her, came as her son. So in that way, he comes specifically to be with the devotees. So we can see Krishna's heart. Krishna says, I am in the heart of the devotees and the devotees in my heart. It's a loving relationship between the devotee and, and Krishna. And Prabhupada is saying, who is a sadhu? Sadhu is pure devotee of the Lord. Pure devotee. He may be born in a very learned family or no, but if he's a pure devotee, he is a sadhu. Krishna conscious person, he is a sadhu. Doesn't matter what family is born in. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying, um, he is pointing out. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he is the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita. He was empowered to, to record the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. We were just hearing about Lord Chaitanya in the last paragraph. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself. He is mentioned in so many different scriptures that Krishna will come in Kaliyuga as Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya, he came as a Channa avatar. He came... Krishna came as a devotee. He came as a devotee to teach us how we can become devotees. So he never himself claimed that I am God. Like at Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna is speaking, he says, yes, I am God. I am the original, origin of everything. Everything is resting on me as pearls are resting on a thread. I am the source of the material and spiritual worlds. The living entities are my parts and parcels. He is declaring it openly. I am God. But when he came as Lord Chaitanya, he came as a devotee. Why did he do that? To teach us how we can become devotees. You know, if a teacher writes A, B, C, doesn't mean the teacher does not know A, B, C. She's writing to teach us A, B, C. So that's why Lord Chaitanya came. Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya. Even Bhagavatam gives us the, uh, lets us, uh, tells us of the information that Lord Chaitanya is going to come in this Kali Yuga and people who are intelligent will worship him with the Sankirtana movement. So many scriptures, so many scriptures, even in Mahabharata, the Vishnu Shashranam, the Bhishma Dev, when he's speaking the names of Lord Vishnu, he's pointing out to Lord Chaitanya. And the so many Puranas, Upanishads are pointing out that Krishna comes as Lord Chaitanya in this age of Kali. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying, what is avatar incarnation? The avatar is coming from the spiritual world, from the Vaikuntha. So one who is descending, avatar, avatari, it's an incarnation. These incarnations, they are there in the spiritual world. They are coming from the spiritual world to 
for our benefit, for different pastimes, no? like Matsya avatar, Karma avatar. There's so many different avatars. Krishna Prabhupada is telling us there's Purusha avatars. You know, who are the Purusha avatars? The Purusha avatars, Yogita, you know, who are the Purusha avatars? The Purusha avatars are the. I'm sorry? Huh? Nasimadev, Lord Buddha. No, the Purusha avatars are Mahavishnu, uh, Garbhodakshai oh. Vishnu, and Shirodakshai Vishnu. Vishnu. I'm sorry? Yeah. I'm sorry. Garbhodakshai Vishnu, I think your voice is very unclear. I'm not able to understand. So, anyway, the Purusha avatars are the three Purushas. The Mahavishnu, the... Huh? I'm sorry, Neetu, you're saying something? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, so Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and Shirodakshai Vishnu. Then the Guna avatars. Yeah, does anyone know what the Guna avatars? Uh, no. Guna avatars are Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva. They are the they are the masters of the three gunas, the modes of nature. And these guna avatars are also okay. avatar of Krishna, where they are coming from otherwise, right? Then again we have Leela avatars when Krishna is coming to perform the different Leelas. Hmm. In that we Lord Narasimha and Lord Rama. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they come in Leela. Then we have Shakti Avesh Avatar. Yes. Shakti Avesh Avatar, they are special avatar. They can be either Vishnu Tattva or Jiva Tattva. Jiva Tattva means living entity, but living entity who is given the powers by Krishna. To do a specific, a specific uh, function, like Vyasadev. Vyasadev is a Shakti Avesh avatar. He's a living entity. He's not Jiva. Uh, he's not Vishnu Tattva. He's a living entity, but he is empowered by Krishna to uh, write all the Vedas, put it in writing. No ordinary person can do that because otherwise the Vedas will become contaminated because we are defective, right? So we ordinary people can't write it. Manvantara avatar means in the reign of every Manu, what the avatars come. Yuga avatars mean every yuga, the avatars are coming to, to establish the yuga dharma. So like this, there are many, many avatars of, of Krishna. There's It's like... So many waves in the ocean can't even count, right? So the avatars are coming and going. So many, unlimited. We can't even count. But we have to understand. That there are so many avatars, so many kalas, so many amsha, so many expansions of Krishna. But the original form of God is Krishna, Sham Sundar, with two hands, Holding a flute, two lotus eyes, peacock feather on his head. That is the original form. All, all the avatars are coming from this form of Krishna. Yeah. And when he came as Lord Chaitanya, he came to give us this Sankirtana movement. Sankirtana movement is what is Kali Yoga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. He came to give us the the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. This is how we can worship the Lord in this age, by chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra. Is that okay? Yes. Any questions, comments? Anything to add? Uh, 
Um, yeah, where can we read more about these other avatar that you just mentioned? Bhagavatam. Okay. Yeah, Bhagavatam. So many uh, pastimes of so many avatars are there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.